Welcome to Sports Spectrum, the sports and faith podcast that brings Jesus back into the conversation. Here's your host, Jason Romano. Welcome to Sports Spectrum. I am Jason Romano. Great to have you joining us here today on the show. Excited about our guest, Kelsey Plum. She was the number one overall pick in the WNBA draft in 2017, the Naismith College Player of the Year, the best player in college basketball in 2017, got drafted into the WNBA by the San Antonio Stars. They then relocated to Las Vegas, where she's currently playing with the Las Vegas Aces. And Kelsey has a great story. She really does. She played a little bit overseas as well in 2017, 2018, and 2019 in Istanbul, Turkey. Helped that team win the Turkish League Championship. This year, she's staying back in the States and preparing for USA Basketball and 2020 in Tokyo. Kelsey's got a great story of faith, a great story of basketball, and a great story of persevering. She had a lot of success and was on top of the world two, three years ago in college at the University of Washington and, you know, hit a little bump in the road. And we talk about that bump and kind of how her faith was challenged and tested and This is really good stuff here from Kelsey Plum from the Las Vegas Aces in the WNBA. Take a listen to Kelsey here on Sports Spectrum. Kelsey Plum, welcome to Sports Spectrum. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's so good to talk to you, Kelsey, and so glad to have you here on Sports Spectrum. And your story is actually featured in our latest edition of the Sports Spectrum magazine. Jonathan Isaac from the Orlando Magic is on the cover. And I know in talking to you before we started taping, you are actually training for USA Basketball and the Olympics in 2020 in Tokyo. Tell us about that. Yeah, so actually USA Basketball, um, well, there's a new Olympic sport. It's three on three. um, And it's 2020 in Tokyo. So I've actually been training for both the five on five national team and then also three on three. And three on three is a little bit different. it has like different rules. You play with a different ball. Um, it's, a, it's a different pace of a game. And so it's been interesting, like flip flopping back and forth between the two. But um, I'm staying in Seattle. I went to Washington, so kind of works out. I know a lot of people. This is like home away from home. And uh, I'm really happy to try to, you know, see how good I can get. I love it. So three on three and five on five. Mm-hmm. How is the is it is it? Is it different practicing or training for the for USA basketball as opposed to three? How do you train for a three on three as compared to a five on five other than just a different ball? Oh, well, I mean, the rules are completely different. So for three on three, um, it's a 12 second shot clock. And it's mm. not like your normal, you know, if me and you went in the backyard and played, we'd like say you scored a bucket. OK, I would check the ball. It's not like that. So as soon as the ball goes through the net, it's live for you. You just have to clear it beyond the three. So, like, the game goes super fast. Like I said, it's a 12-second shot clock. And that means that basically when the ball goes through the net, time starts. So as soon as you get, like, get the ball and go, clock's counting down. So by the time you clear it and then try to look for your shot, you're probably at, like, six seconds. So it's like... It's a lot faster pace. I think uh, there's no breaks. And you play to 21. Threes are worth two. Any, anything inside the arc is worth one. Um, and, like, that's a game. So it's either you play to 21 or 10 minutes. So the game is, like, super fast. There's no breaks. But then five on five is obviously different. You know, yeah. there are breaks. It's longer. So it's just, like, you definitely have to train. And how you train is you basically have to play, like, a lot of, like, three on three games to get yourself – in that mode. And I guess the three on three playing, because I mean, we, I used to go play pickup, like you said, in the backyard with my buddies and we play three on three and it's, it at least prepares you probably better for the five on five game, right? Yeah, I would hope so. I think, you know, move without the ball and uh, you have to play fast. You have to get back on, on defense, close out to your man pretty quick. Um, So yeah, I would hope it helps because (laughs) that'd be really hard that I'm like, you know, wasting time training for one and not the other. So (laughs) Hopefully they translate over. Absolutely. Kelsey Plum's our guest here on Sports Spectrum. Let's go back and learn a little bit about your journey. I know that you played high school ball in La Jolla, California, one of the more beautiful places I think I've ever been to. I was there about 16, (laughs) 17 years ago. What was it like growing up in California, playing basketball in that 
that area of the country. Take us back to where the journey began. Yeah, so I'm from Poway, which is probably like 30 minutes inland. Um, but then I went to school to La Jolla Country Day. And I mean, gosh, that's one of the biggest blessings that I've ever um, been, you know, granted with, I think. It's an amazing school, but um, obviously they have an amazing basketball program. And my high school coach really, like, changed the trajectory of my career. And uh, I'm super grateful for her. And, I mean, like you said, it's one of the most beautiful places in the world. And, uh, yeah, that's uh, it's not a bad place to go to school. <laughs> I'd say so. Now, I know you, you obviously went to college at the University of Washington, had a lot of success, which we'll talk about in a second. But was there a little bit of a weather culture shock for you going to Washington State from in that essence that area of California near San Diego and La Jolla was it was it a culture shock just the first time dealing with cold and snow and all that oh absolutely um (laughs) my freshman year I got here and it rained for 60 days straight oh wow and I would call my mom and I would just be like mom I, I don't think I can do this like this is you know this is like so sad and it's so gray and there's no sun and um, it was really hard for me, but I think, um, what I valued overall was a lot more than the weather. So, you know, there's pluses and minuses to every situation you come in and Seattle's beautiful in the summer and the winter, not so much. So I think I just had to decide to just, you know, grow some thick skin and, and I've learned to really appreciate it, like appreciate the rain, you know, yeah. uh, but it took me a couple of years for sure. When is your faith tar- start to take shape for you? I know your faith is important to you, your faith in Christ. Tell us your testimony and kind of where that start to, started to take shape for you. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I grew up in a, a Christian household and my parents kind of laid a foundation for me. Um, but they were also very big on like, you know what, you're going to be your own person and you're going to find out how you feel about Jesus and God on your own. Yeah. Um, and I respect that a lot because I think everyone's journey is very different. And so I think when I left the house and I went to college, um, I kind of started to realize, uh, you know, God had big plans for me. And and if I wanted to, you know, truly embrace his full, you know, gifts and everything, I think I'd try to live, you know, live the right way. And I, uh, I always prayed that he would direct my steps on just decisions that I should make and where I should go to college. And, you know, when I was in college, certain decisions that I had to make. And I'm super grateful because I think that he's always really been very precise about exactly where he wanted me to be. And he's put certain people in my life um, to really help me. And I'm just super grateful. So I think for me, um, you know, as I continue to grow into a woman and, a woman of faith, I try to make sure that I'm a light and, you know, God's given me so much. And so if I can find a way to like shine that light on other people, um, you know, I feel like I have a responsibility to do that. Hmm. What was that? I love that. What what was that like as you get to college the first time away and you even talked about the weather, right? The culture shock there, but now you have to sort of grow into this woman of God and, and develop this relationship for yourself with the Lord. What was that like from that perspective? Obviously on the court, you had to grow as well and lots of success there, but from a spiritual perspective, your growth, uh, with your relationship with God during your time at Washington. Yeah. You know, I think it was kind of like a trial and error thing. Um, and I can feel myself at times, you know, drifting in different, uh, directions and that that's just not what, you know, I just knew that, if God's on my side, like if I'm with God and I'm walking with him, my life will go well. And I think that, um, you know, like I have made a lot of mistakes, but I'm also very, um, grateful that I've had a lot of people in my life that are godly and that have always helped me, um, you know, come back on track. And so I have a very honest and, um, loving family that's always helped me with that. And I have a, I'm an amazing circle of friends that are, spiritual people that have, um, just really been truthful with me. And, you know, they're the first ones to be like, Hey, plumber, like you're wrong. Like this is not, you know, this, that, or whatever, you know? So I think that's super important. And, um, like, you know, it's a daily, you know, it's a daily fight. It's a daily, uh, struggle to, 
to be, <laughs> to be right with God. And, uh, it's yeah. not something that you just like do and it's done. You know, it's like every day I feel like I fail, but you try to fail forward. I call it a process, right? And you mentioned failing forward. I really like that word because I think success for a lot of people is hard to handle in their walk with God because a lot of times it takes away our need for God because we feel like everything's going perfectly. How did you handle success? Because you had a lot of it. 2017 Naismith College Player of the Year, 2016 Final Four, 2017 John Wooden Award winner. You were the best college basketball player in the country in 2017. How did you handle success? Well, that's a great question. Um, honestly, I don't think I handled it very well. Um, it was one of those kind of like snowball effects that everything happened very fast, especially my senior year, kind of just – compiled like you know the scoring records happened and then the national awards happened and then you know I was drafted um uh, number one and it just kind of happened really fast and um I didn't really get a chance to like step back and take a deep breath and just appreciate my college experience and appreciate uh you know everything that had gone on you know it's because it's success. It's like, okay, down, next thing, next thing, next thing. And you kind of become immune or like numb to whatever award or anything that you're getting. Cause you're searching for like the next goal or whatever. And obviously that can be a good thing, but it's, it's not at times because you can get, um, you're not living in like a, a reality. You're living in like this, you know, you're, you're just, you're on like a, fast forward track, I guess I would say. So, um, I think that's why I've struggled a little bit being a professional. Cause I, I didn't know how to handle success and I didn't know, um, how to like, you know, stop, take a breath, appreciate it, be grateful for it. Um, I just thought that was always how it was. And so, um, it's been really good for me to kind of little, like hit a little bit of this wall and, uh, try to, I had to step back and, kind of build a lot of more my, my character I think my character fell behind as all this stuff came to the forefront and I I wasn't able to like work on myself and grow as a woman and um so it's been really good for me because I think we don't realize that we have issues until stuff goes bad and then we're like oh wait a second like you know what I mean so I, I think uh I think this has been really good for me and I think that I'm finally ready to take the next step in my career and do some things on the professional level. Well, that's what I was going to ask you too, because the reason why I ask about success, because with success, just as human beings, whether it's in your professional journey, in your job, or just in life comes the difficult times and the setbacks. And you get mm. selected number one overall in 2017. You mentioned that in the WNBA draft. And with that accomplishment came those expectations. And you, it sounds like you felt the weight of trying to fulfill those expectations and you hit that wall, as you said. Can you take us through sort of dealing with success coming easily or whatever and having to kind of do some soul searching and maybe connecting even to God and say, okay, what are you trying to do here, Lord? Can you walk us through that a little bit? Yeah. I, uh, you know, it's interesting. I had someone a couple months ago say, you know, if God allowed all that stuff to happen to you, like coming into the league and you were just automatically, you know, an all-star or you were just super successful. Um, do you think you would have been able to handle it? Hmm. And I stepped back and I, I realized like, no, I, I think he knew exactly what he was doing. Cause, um, like you said, I got drafted number one and I had done so well for so long. I didn't know what failure looked like. And so hmm. when I finally failed, I'm, I kind of took it like, I'm not worth, I'm not worth, um, me as a person, as Kelsey, because I'm not playing well basketball wise. And I never yeah, thought sure. my identity connected until it didn't go well for me. So, um, I think God knew like, you know what, this is something you really got to work on because, uh, it's not healthy. Um, it's not healthy to have that relationship of my performance equals how, how good I am as a person. And so, hmm. um, I kind of had to step back and really, really, dig deep, um, figure out why I've, I had become like that and like unlearn a lot of those, uh, negative habits that I've had. And, um, 
I mean, it hasn't been easy. These past few years have been some of the toughest years of my life, but I'm very grateful, and I know that it's um, it's changed the trajectory of my life. Did you kind of go through an identity crisis? I hear this a lot from athletes, especially mm-hmm. those that are on the highest level of, okay, my identity is found in basketball because I've done this, this, and this, and suddenly you're not doing this, this, and this, and you realize, wait a minute, my identity has to be in something bigger. Did you have that a little bit? Absolutely. I had that. The worst part is I had it, and I didn't even know I had it. Mm. Um, and I think it took all that. It took literally all that to, like, rip away from me to realize, wow, um, I really have some self self self-confidence issues based on, you know, me as the person. I've always been a very confident person. I've always been a very confident basketball player, but I didn't realize that my performance directly affected my, my mood, Hmm. um, and how I felt inside and my, my worthiness. So for, for sure, um, You know, and and I try to tell, you know, athletes now, like, really look at yourself in the mirror and and you got to, you got to, you know, it's hard. It's really hard to look at yourself and, you know, have to change some of the things that you are. Um, But it's like, I mean, it'll change how you, how you are, how you treat people, how you live, you know, why you do things. Um, And so... Like I said, like I definitely had a huge identity crisis. Kelsey Plum is our guest here on Sports Spectrum. Last couple questions here with Kelsey. So now that you've sort of turned a corner, as you like to say, I know you had a great WNBA playoffs in 2019, and that was awesome to watch and kind of looking to take that next leap in 2020. What, from a spiritual perspective, are some of the daily rhythms and disciplines that you have to st- that you use in your life and still in your life to stay connected? to the Lord during, during the year, or that you'd like to even implement more in 2020. Is there anything that's helped and worked and just kind of keeping you connected and spiritually, you know, on solid ground? Oh, for sure. I, I mean, there's definitely a ton of stuff I'd, I'd like to work on, but, um, I think I love listening to music, like gospel music, different stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I think, I think also just having a state of gratitude. Um, When you look at life with a lens of gratitude, um, there's so much joy that comes from that. And uh, um, I see so many, you know, the Bible talks about like, if you're going to look for something, you're going to find it. And so I, I definitely try to make it a point every day that whatever I'm doing, like, I don't care if it's a workout. I don't care if I'm talking to you right now on the phone. I don't care if I'm, you know, going to go eat lunch with someone, um, being in that state of gratitude. Like I'm grateful we get to talk about this right now. Um, I'm grateful that, you know, just, just the little things. And I I think, uh, that's completely changed my, my mental process and how I see things. Uh, I think for so long I, I thought so negatively and I didn't even know, I just was very pessimistic and, uh, critical because, you know, if you want to be great, you got to be really hard on yourself. But there's also that fine line of like, you know what? Um, I also got to be like my biggest fan in a sense of, um, you know, building myself up and that way I can build others up and things like that. Well, that comes straight from the Bible, building each other up, encouraging each other in their walk. And I think that's wonderful that you're going about that the way you are, Kelsey. This has been great. Thank you so much for being here on the show. Last question that we have, we ask this to all of our guests here on the podcast. What are you learning from God today? What is the Lord teaching you right now in the season of life that he has you in? What are you learning from God? Oh, good question. What am I learning from the Lord right now? Uh, Patience. Um, I think that, you know, it's funny. There's that line that's like, uh, we pray for patience and then God gives us opportunities to work on patience. <laughs> that's um, right. And I yeah. see that very, I see that very prevalently right now. Um, and that's something I want to be, I want to be patient. I want to be a patient person. I want to be a patient friend. Um, I want to be a patient daughter. Uh, you know, I think that because my life is so fast and there's always something going on, I can be very impatient and I want things done now the way I want it when I want it. And so I think 
uh, just be able to step back and let go of that control and allow God to uh, take his time. She is Kelsey Plum being patient as we head into 2020. Las Vegas Aces forward, working out with USA Basketball. We'll keep an eye on how that transpires and progresses. Kelsey, thanks so much. You guys can read about Kelsey in the Sports Spectrum magazine, the latest edition. And certainly we appreciate you spending time with us here on the podcast. Thanks, Kelsey. Thank you so much. Many thanks to Kelsey Plum from the Las Vegas Aces and the WNBA for joining us here on Sports Spectrum's podcast, 2017 Nath- Naismith College Player of the Year. And I love Kelsey's heart. I love that she's not saying she has it all figured out, but she was honest and she was truthful and she's working through all of this and God's going to make her better for it. I believe it. Great things on the way for Kelsey Plum in 2020. Grateful to have her here on Sports Spectrum. You can give her a follow over on Twitter at Kelsey Plum 10, Kelsey Plum 10. And like I said, you can read her story a little bit different type of take of her story in the latest edition of Sports Spectrum magazine, which you can subscribe to right now over at SportsSpectrum.com. It's 18 bucks for an entire year subscription. You get a quarterly magazine, four issues plus a couple bonus issues, $18, super cheap. You can subscribe right now to the Sports Spectrum magazine and read Kelsey Plum's story in the latest edition. Go to SportsSpectrum.com and subscribe today. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time right here on Sports Spectrum. As always, you can reach us directly on our social media pages, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And you can email me, jason at sportsspectrum.com. See you next time right here on Sports Spectrum. Have a great rest of your day.